Now, team, keep it clean. I got to issue some apologies because I completely forgot about this. So that is my fault. That is my bad. And what I'm talking about is questions from subscribers. We didn't even do it last week. And this is something that I want to do moving forward at least once per week. Because as y'all know, stuff gets crazy busy with the Baltimore Ravens and the NFL. And we do stuff on this channel. And we do stuff on the More Engraving Vids channel, too. And make sure you subscribe to both. And leave likes on the videos, too, because it shows a lot of support and helps out both channels big time. But... Question from subscriber. I, I've been slacking. And another thing, too, I got to apologize to all the Team Keep It Clean patrons. Shout out to y'all. Really, really appreciate y'all. Thank you for being patrons. I can under, I can completely understand if right now you're like, man, the patrons, we don't get anything special. Uh, and Graven Viz ain't really been doing much with it. So I can understand if some of y'all want to be like, you know what? I don't even want to be a patron anymore. I completely get it. And some people have done that. And, and I'm not mad at you at all because I understand. It's the same way with the Team Keep It Clean channel members. I appreciate all of y'all like crazy. I, I, I do. I, I, I guarantee you I do. Uh, but stuff be so busy and I, I continuously forget to give y'all your proper shout outs and your proper appreciation. So this is me doing that right now because y'all deserve it. Y'all show a lot of extra love and support to the channel. So thank you. Thank you. I, I wish I could find a way to get every list of everybody right in front of me right now so we can go name by name by name by name. But I, I really, really appreciate y'all, for real. Seriously, I do. Uh, now, you know what? With, without any further ado, though, let's get into these questions from subs. Now, some are going to be from last week. Some are going to be from this week. But we're going to tie them all together and get this thing done. Let's do it. And we're getting this thing started with a question from my guy, Martin, who's been a patron for two years. So I appreciate you, my friend. He said, coming into the season, I was very down on the Ravens defense. I didn't think they would be very good, especially the edge rusher and cornerback position. What I saw on Sunday against the Texans uh, was very encouraging. I know it was just one week and we lost the key piece, but I hope I continue to be wrong. And hey. After week two, what we saw against the Bengals, like that team, those Bengals, still impressed. Still impressed. Yes, they scored 24 points, but we got to remember, too, Bengals really just scored 17. And while that's still a good amount of points for this Baltimore Ravens defense to be as depleted as they were and as hurt as they were and to hold that Bengals team to 17 points, that says a whole lot. To hold Jamar Chase to, like, 31 yards, I think. Now, T. Higgins, he got like 89 yards and two touchdowns. But to hold them down the way that the Baltimore Ravens did, that was phenomenal. So I really lo I loved it. Uh, he said, I don't mind being wrong in this case. I've been someone who has put a lot of hope in Adafi Away since his rookie season last year. Uh, it made me down on him. But one thing I always love about Adafi Away is that he is all over the field. Even if he doesn't get to the QB, he will chase down whoever throws the ball to in the backfield. I love the hustle from Adafi. Dude has insane speed for an edge rusher. He created lots of chaos against the Texans. Even if he wasn't getting sacks, uh, he felt like he was a big reason why the Texans couldn't move the ball because he was chasing C.J. Stroud down constantly. Uh, sorry for the rambling. I just wanted to put my thoughts out there. And thanks for the platform. And stay hydrated, team. Keep it clean. Yes, Adafi Away. In that Texans game, he was moving around a lot. Now, unfortunately, in the Bengals game, he did get hurt, which sucks. And hopefully he won't be out too long uh, for not only the Ravens sake, but for his sake, too. So hopefully he can be he can bounce back real soon. And he also said Nelson Aguilar reminds me of Jacoby Jones, a good veteran that will be in the league a while and has had success in that he is compl a complimentary, reliable guy uh, that defenses don't cover because they're trying to cover everyone else. And do you think he could be Lamar's Jacoby Jones? Mm. It's an interesting comparison. Um, I don't ex anticipate them using him in the return game because that's obviously something big that Jacoby Jones did for the Baltimore Ravens. But, yeah, that complimentary guy, that reliable guy, that guy that can give you some significant plays throughout the course of the season, he may not be the number one guy, and he doesn't have to be the number one guy. I mean, even though against the Bengals he was the number one guy. But uh, he helps where he helps that, and he makes everybody else's job easier because he's still good at doing his job. Next question came from my guy Plex, who's been a patron for a year. He said, would you rather? It was a sloppy game on both sides of the ball against the Texans. Lots of penalties and mental mistakes. I didn't see anything that couldn't be fixed as the season progresses. More rust than anything. These injuries really put a damper on the win. I feel so bad for JK. The man wants to play ball and showcase his abilities. It's not like he's suffering from sprains, strains, and bruises. He's getting career-threatening injuries. Whatever the future holds for him, I'll always be rooting for him. We saw Ronnie, Marcus, Linderbaum all go down. Uh, with all the injuries we had yesterday, a thought came to me. Would you rather have lost and had everyone stay healthy or keep things the way they happened it, obviously it is what it is we can't change anything but it was a hard question for me and i could not come up with an answer our division is tough the asc as a whole is just as tough we can't afford to take an l against a team we should beat and you never want to start the season 0-1 but at the same time we could potentially be missing four key contributors for some significant time no real updates had come out at this time uh, but if you had to pick which would you choose that is a very interesting question and i want to say it's a fun question it's not a fun question given a scenario for it is what it is like you mentioned but it is kind of a fun question but i would take the win 
Reason being, because with Marcus Williams, with Ronnie Stanley, with Tyler Linderbaum, uh, unfortunately, J.K. Dobbins, um, but with all the other guys, they expected to come back. So they are going to be, it's not like they lost for the season. It's not like they're done for the season. Obviously, we would rather take the win and everybody healthy. But if I had to choose one, I would choose the win because you're getting those guys in the long haul. Next question came from my guy, Dominic, who's been a patron for nine months. He said, what's up, my guy? What's up? Uh, I'm going to keep this one short and sweet. But first, I got to say thanks again for all you do to inspire and inform us every day. Oh, no, no, no I don't do nothing. Y'all inspire me. Uh, and y'all make this a lot of fun and y'all help out in a lot of different ways. So I appreciate y'all. He said, okay, so am I the only one who has noticed that the same pundits and so-called analysts that were saying that there was no way that our beloved Ravens could ever have a deep playoff run with their previous run-heavy offense are the same hypocrites chastising the Ravens for loading up in the receiver room and trying a more balanced offense this season? I'm hearing a lot of, why would you go away from what won you the MVP argument from those same pundits? It's official. They just want to hate us, particularly Lamar. Uh, they're looking for anything to complain about when it comes to him. Why do they not want to see that man succeed? I have a few suspicions, but... They're not very team keep it clean so i'll just bite my tongue on those for now uh the hate is definitely real out here but keep up the good work blessings to you the fam and all the team keep it clean and like the haters common sense i'm out oh that's a that's a question right there and i i think people just you know for, for the longest there's been a lot of people that just do not want to see lamar jackson succeed uh they don't want to see him win um and because he, he plays the, the game so different from a lot of other people, from a lot of other quarterbacks. Uh, and so many people were down on it from the jump. And some people have continued to stay down on it. Some people have changed their tune. Uh, but for the people who continue to stay down on it, they, they, they're always going to change something. They're gonna, always going to change a narrative here and there. They're always going to uh, do a remix on the, the reason why that it's not going to work or that it, it's probably going to fail or whatnot. But... It is what it is. Now it just continues to be up to Baltimore Ravens and Lamar Jackson to prove them all wrong. Next question came from my guy, Javo. He said, hey, I know it's only week two and it's a little early for this question, but it must be talked about sooner or later. What happens this season with our upcoming free agents like Geno Stone, Patrick Queen, Matabike, and others? Do we rework some contracts? So, Geno Stone, mm, it's tricky, man, because I, I think he goes somewhere else and, and, and starts. Because from now until Marcus Williams gonna, comes back, he's going to show people like, hey, I can start. He's already shown people that he can start. But if he's a free agent after this year, then I, I think he'll be going and I think he'll get an opportunity. Patrick Queen, I think, is the trickiest one out of here because Patrick Queen, he's a baller, man. He's a baller. That boy can play. Um, him and Roquan Smith, the Ravens obviously love the duo. And I think that they would really try to work hard to get something done, something that, be, that would be reasonable. If Patrick Queen is willing to take less money to stay with the Ravens, I think they could get it worked out. But if he wants to get as much bread as he possibly can, which I couldn't blame him, then he's gone. Matabike, who the Baltimore Ravens also love, who's off, off to a good start, uh, minus those penalties, but he's off to a pretty good start. Um, it, it's tricky, but I think... I, th I think they will find a way to keep him as well. Uh, and some others, I, I can't think anybody else off the top of my head. He also said, watching this game, uh, we definitely need offensive line. Uh, with the always injured Ronnie Stanley, do you think it's time for us to just look into trading him? Uh, I don't think they really can right now. I, I think they locked into him for a while because he has a big contract, and then they've reworked his contract so many times. So when it, whenever you reconstruct somebody's contract, you push that money down the line. So Ronnie Stanley, they, they, they locked in for a minute with him. And he said, also with the JK injury, no, I'm not looking to trade for one like others are but uh, what do you think the contract negotiations negotiations are going to look like oh i think they're going to be all in favor of the ravens like every last contract negotiation with them and jk dobbins they would all be in favor of the ravens because he's hurt and, and he's been hurt and he's kept getting hurt so ravens they have all the leverage with that oh next question came from my guy joshua he said could jk's injury help the ravens pass game to stop playing scale what's up in graven good to see you in the booth for another nfl season i appreciate your work ethic brother no i appreciate you man uh, first of all praise up for jk i pray he recovers and lives out to his full potential as a stud in the league we know he can be secondly though i'm torn about jk his injury could actually benefit the ravens offense in the long run i know it sounds dark but hear me out the offense has to get out of their comfort zone i'm starting to think that lamar and the play callers play scared no deep shots easy sweeps only throwing open I don't see the fearlessness and dog in their eyes like 2019. The passing game did not show up in week one due to rust, but you also see them trying to turn Zay Flowers into an extended running back with all those horizontal throws. Right, and that was getting on my last nerves. The O-line needs to improve for sure, but the only way Lamar and Monk can truly develop the passing game is by trial and fire. Miscues, interceptions, route misses, and so on early in the season. It's okay, but they got to stop doing this run and sweep shell and start taking chances. When you're more afraid of making mistakes than actually trying, it tells me your ego is more important to you than growth. Ooh, that is such a great question. And you know what? I'm actually glad that we got to answer this after week two because everything that you wanted, you got. At them taking more chances... They did it. They certainly did it. 
um, them going down the field more, they did it. They certainly did it. So everything that you were concerned, the, the offensive line playing better, even without Ronnie Stanley and Linda Baum, they did a phenomenal job against them Bengals the other day. So all of your concerns, they got taken care of a week later. Oh, wait, hurt. Next question came from my guy, D3. He said, what's good in Graveling? And team, keep it clean. I hope that the family is well, too. Now, quick question. With the timeline on Bowser's return and possible injury to away, which Harbaugh refused to talk about, do you feel that we should just elevate one of our practice squad guys like Jeremiah Moon, which they said had a great training camp, or move on to sign an available free agent? Um, and he said, Tavius Robinson, Clowney, or Jabba are currently good to go right now. Uh, and he named some available guys like Kyle Vinoy, Melvin Ingram, Carlos Dunlap, Robert Quinn, Jason Pierre-Paul, Bruce Irvin. Again, thank you for your content and get your suit ready for your interview with ESPN and CBS. Speak it into existence. I appreciate you, D3. Hey, who, 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 know, who knows what could happen in the future? We'll see. Um, but as far as it all just depends. It, it, it depends on how long Adafi away is going to be out for. Um, I think. Hey, you you know your guys that you got on a practice squad. They sitting there, they they're ready and they're available. You see them in practice all the time too. So if you feel like one of them could come in and contribute, hey, I say go for it. Go for it. But if you feel like they their con contributions would be limited or they may not be as good as you want them to be, then I, I think everything everything just depends because I, I, if I say sign somebody, then that means Adafi Away will go to injury reserve. So that means he'll be out at least four games. Now, is his injury that significant to where he'll be out at least four games? We don't know. We, we still don't know. As of this recording, we just don't know. Um, so everything just really depends on that. If he's going to be out for a while, okay, you could sign somebody, hold it down, or even sign him to the practice squad. But if he's only going to be out a short amount of time, you could try some of your own guys like they did with Clowney. Clowney get a lot more playing time like he did against the Bengals. Next question came from my guy Anthony. He said, what's up, Engraven? Real quick question. What trade would you like to see or do you see the Ravens making before the deadline? Hope you and the fam are good. God bless and trust. Appreciate you. That's a really good question. Um... I think it all depends on when guys get back because I could easily say corner, um, even though they play really well against the Bengals. But and then getting Marlon Humphrey back any day now, that would be great. Um, you could say pass rush. But again, we, I feel like we don't even know our pass rush yet uh, because with the Bengals, they were getting the ball out so fast. We didn't even get to see if our pass rush was good or bad or whatnot. We didn't get to see where it was at in the Texans game. It was solid. It was, it was, it was straight. But in the Bengals game, it was uh, we didn't really get to see them that much. So. It will probably be one of those positions. Uh, probably either. It just, it, it just it, it's. I feel like it's so early to say. It's too early to say for me right now because right now we still have those unknowns. But if I absolutely had to choose one right now after two games. Um, I would probably say cornerback. Next question came from my guy Colin. He said, what's up, Graven? Hope all is going well. I was wondering, since Linda Bond was injured, do you think the Ravens might bring in a center like Rodney Hudson or Chase Rulia for the time being? No, no, I, I think they stay put. And he did ask this after week one. Uh, but still, I would have thought they would have promoted from within. Uh, with the center position, uh, the, the, the center to QB exchange is very, very timely. It's very, very significant because they hand the ball off to each other every single snap. So I would expect the Ravens, if they, when, when Tyler Lindenbaum got hurt, uh, Sam Mustafer came in there and he, he did his thing uh, and he's continued to do his thing. So I would expect them to keep it like that because you don't want to bring in some, well, you, if, if push came to shove, you might have to, you would have to in a certain, situa certain situations, but with Sam Mustafer, he was already on the team. He was already playing center for the team. So he already knows the team. The, he's gelling with the offensive line and whatnot, with, with the actual offense itself. So making him be the center uh, instead of bringing in somebody who's a free agent, it makes the transition a lot smoother. Oh, man. I wish I would have saw this question before because we literally just did a video on this on Thursday morning. He said, what's up with the usage of Gus Edwards? Next question came from my guy, a song. He said, hey, Engraven, I was wondering if you think there's anything going on behind the scenes or injury-wise with Gus Edwards. In the Houston game, it felt like J.K. Dobbins never came off the field until he tore his Achilles and this is even with him clearly not performing his best only then did we see some real Gus action and even then it seemed to be a second fiddle to Justice Hill they gave Hill the ball in all their goal line situations which was odd given the short yardage advantage Gus gives you Gus ended the game having the most yards and best yards per carry of their running backs by a good margin yet in the Ravens wire video they released to they released to address JK's injury uh shout out to Garrett Downing they presented Hill as a guy to step up and spent more time on him than Gus it may be nothing but it just feels weird to see the usage of uh, and behavior towards Gus given all he has done and continue to do what do you think P.S. take care man uh, you've been giving me joy in a in year round Ravens outlet for years now and I really appreciate that hey thank you Asong I, I appreciate that a lot man thank you 
Um, and I, yeah, I, I agree with Gus Edwards. It's, it's been it's been weird for years with the the usage or lack thereof with him. Um, he has continued to put up good numbers in limited usage. He has continued to show like he can carry the team if need be. Uh, he's continued to have a, a super high uh, yards per carry. I think his yards per carry throughout his entire career since 2018 uh, is 5.2 yards per carry. So yeah, he, man, he been here since Lamar been here. Yeah, shout out to Gus. But um. Yeah, so it, it it's weird because before before he got his uh his three year contract extension, I thought that they were holding him down and restricting him. So when it came time to pay him, they could be cheap, and I mean they did do that. It was a cheap contract. Uh, but then after that, I'm like, okay, you got him signed on the contract. Why not let him go off? Why not use him? And of course, I know you know they wanted J.K. to be the guy. Uh, but in 2021, that's when J.K. got hurt. But then Gus Edwards got hurt, and Justice Hill got hurt. They were all out for the year, so that messed up everything. Uh, then the following year, uh, they came back. Uh, J.K. was still hurt, so there was more Gus, but still it, it was limited. And then of course, uh, last year and this I mean, excuse me, this year is the same. It's, it's really weird. Uh, so I don't, I don't know what it is. I, I don't know what it is. But Gus Edwards continues to show up and, and show out, continues to just do his job. He don't complain, in, at least don't complain publicly without that anything we hear of. Uh, but he just shows up and does his thing. So why he doesn't get more, no clue. Next question had come from my guy, Darren. And, and he sent this question before the Texans game, but it still applied to the Bengals as well. He said, Engraven, can I secondary defend Nico Collins? And Nico Collins, he was getting a bunch of catches, a bunch of yards too. Uh, he said, with guys like Mike Evans, Devontae Parker, Zay Jones, Corey Davis, I noticed that we get our lunch eight. Uh, do we have a problem with tall athletic wide receivers? Um, and I think so, but I think they give anybody a problem because if somebody's short and athletic, then if somebody tall is around, they can knock it down. But if somebody's tall and athletic, that's a problem. That's a big problem. Um, and they are a matchup nightmare. Um, so you're going to have to do extra to, to put in work to try to take them out the game. Now, we saw with Nico Collins, he was doing this thing against the Baltimore Ravens. Then we saw with T. Higgins, after a little while, he started getting more sinking, getting more rhythm and started doing his thing against the Baltimore Ravens. Even though uh, one of those matchups was – it was – are Darius Washington against T. Higgins? I'm thinking like, hold up, what, what, what's he doing against T. Higgins in the red zone? In the red zone, like put Kyle Hamilton on him, put one of the cornerbacks on him. So not are Darius Washington. Are Darius Washington can play, uh, but that matchup was just, it, it was a, a terrible matchup. So I, I think the Baltimore Ravens definitely going to be looking back at that one and be like, oh, no. Even though Ardarius Washington is out now, which is unfortunate. But, um, yeah, so it, it's one of those things that you just, you got to play it the right way, man. Getting Marlon Humphrey back, though, that will help with that a lot. Next question came from my guy, Flirt Nowinski. He said, what's good? It's your boy, Flirt Nowinski, back again. <laughs> I can't even talk right now. He said, hope all is well with you and yours per usual. And per usual, Mike McDonald is running that tired cover, too, that gets picked apart every game uh, and has lost us plenty of games. And when in doubt, he turns into a wink. And sadly, our line still can't hold water, so Lamar still only has one second to throw majority of the time. So the Zay screens were perfection. It's weird because at least five plays out of the game, Lamar got absolutely perfect pop. And every time he delivers a dot But then the rest of the game is blocking four While they are rushing four And Lamar is being Lamar or getting sacked Bro, this is very alarming But listen, a win is a win And this was obviously after the Texans game But before the Bengals game He says, so I'm not surprised by McDonald You know how I feel about him But the OC, how do you feel about his calls? I know you love the screens because I did too Last question Okay, so first with the uh, with Mike McDonald uh, Excuse me, no With Todd Munkin so far, so good. My only thing has been the third and short plays where he'll do a toss play or a pitch play. I'm not a fan of those, but that's it. And sometimes uh, some of the screens, they can sort of uh, be a little overkill, just a little bit. Not too much, but a little bit. But overall, he's been doing a good job. Obviously, I mean, they scored 25 and 27 points, so yeah, something's going right. Um, and then uh, they've been getting more in rhythm. And obviously, like you mentioned, with the, when the line blocks, when Lamar got a clean pocket, oh, it's, it's game over. It's lights out. Um, but... He don't always have a clean pocket, but he's been doing his thing. And then you saw the uh, you saw the in, in the Bengals game how, yeah, the, the pass rush was getting there. Uh, but Lamar, I don't think he got sacked once. I don't think he did. Uh, and then when the pressure was there, he would evade somebody and they had Justice Hill ready for the check down. So that was super, super important. And I, I love that. And he said, last question, though. Is it time to start firing, strength and conditioning coaches ASAP? There's no way for the last five years we are the most injured team in the NFL, LOL. Like, to be honest, it's not even funny. Might have been a good amount of truth in what Wolf was saying because, bro, it's no way. One game and we lost all those people. Last but not least, the tough part of the business, I think J.K. seen the trend and wanted to get paid. Uh, something like and something like this happened again. And on the flip side of things, the organization didn't want to pay him because they seen the trend, the trend, and didn't want to give him the money before something like that happened again. It's tough because I was at the game and when I seen the tackle, I was crushed. So I can only imagine how he feels. That's real right there, man. 
I remember you said Mitchell was a stash. Well, not anymore, sadly. And like Ronnie Stanley is the majority of the time, sadly. I'm out. Wow, you, you cold for that last part. Last question on this episode came from my guy, Rashawn. And this is sort of a bonus for anybody who goes to Ravens games. He said, what's up, being Raven and team? Keep it clean. This is more of a reminder than a question. For anyone going to Ravens home games, including you, Mr. Engraven, uh, make sure you catch the Ravens band in Camden Yards. We perform a little concert every single home game, normally two hours before kickoff. Hope to see you all out there today. And just like Mark Andrews was for week one, we out. What a way to end it.